What's up, everybody? Me, Time Gamer here, bringing another video. This time, I'm gonna play uh, the Stanley Parable. I know this is an older game, but I haven't played this game yet, so I wanted to give it a try. So uh, I heard good thing about this game. I haven't heard what the game's about. So uh, let's get started. Roll the intro. Alright, so we'll get right into it. End is never the end, the end is never the end, the end is never the end. Okay. Start off a crazy town. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winking, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley, was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. The something Stanley Parable. Changed Stanley, something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, okay. So far the game looks very interesting. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Mm. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh. There he is, everybody. God damn it. Stanley came to a set of two oh. open doors. He entered the door on his left. Oh, I see what the game is doing. The game is is, is sort of driving me to do what it's telling me. No, nope, taking the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fine years ago. Let's see what the game is going. Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. <laughs> There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Ooh. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. Is it Stanley? Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. 
She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pouring the bread out of the oven. Apartment 427. Tell me all about your damn wife. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. No. I'm sorry, but you're in my story now. Uh oh. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Uh oh. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. No, I'm not pressing it. I'm not falling for this game. God damn it. Pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Damn it. And that my fault for you, for your tyranny. This game's pretty though for an older game. I think it's a couple. It's a 2012 game, if I remember. Pretty game. So far, the premise of the game is pretty good. In his mind, he can go on I like the premise. Adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. God damn it. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, or everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. <laughs> the mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. God damn it. There has to be something I can do here. See when I'm pressing when I'm clicking the mouse it sounds like I'm typing on a keyboard. You son of a bitch. Wandered through this fantasy world. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls, and down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions, and down another was a game with a baby, and he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. What happens if I wait a bit? Oh. 
could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? <laughs> I'll tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself. How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't, not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I... Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, now we'll, we'll follow the instructions, see what happens. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet, there was not a single person here, here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. <laughs> Unraveled, Stanley what is going on? Belief, who orchestrated this? What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his... Not really. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, that's tempting. We, we, we can do this after. We'll see what happens.
The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Hmm. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. <laughs> I like the, <laughs> like this game a lot. Pretty cool. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Tell me what's going on. It was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I press the shiny red button. What is going on? When at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. But we'll just keep going to what he's saying. Did I die again? Am I going to restart in my office? I can't see that. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. So by following the instructions, I did exactly... I still... I was still... Beat the game, yeah. I was still technically following instructions. And I'm free. <laughs> That's pretty good. 
we'll see. There was probably more. There's probably more things to it because looking at the trophy list, I think I didn't read the trophies, but there's a lot of trophies. I think I'll unlock three out of nine or something. Or something. So we'll see. It's probably multiple paths down there. So. All right, guys. Ho hopefully you enjoyed the first part of um, of Stanley Parable. Uh, if you enjoyed, of course, like the like the video and subscribe to the channel. Follow me at MeTimeGamer. Follow me uh, twitch.tv forward slash MeTimeGamer. Follow me uh, facebook.com forward slash MeTimeGamer. You can follow me also youtube.com forward slash MeTimeGamer right here. We can watch all the other videos. And then part two that's coming up for this video. So yeah, thank you so much guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Keep on keeping on.